Hi and welcome back. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Uh, thanks for stopping by and you're, you're very welcome. Before we start today's video, um, I've got some interesting news. As you know, I tend to shy away from um, recommending specific NMN suppliers uh, on the channel. Um, although I have been approached by a number of NMN suppliers offering me free product. Um, and I'm assuming there'd be some kind of quid pro quo. I can't say that for sure because I've never uh, engaged them other than to say, thank you for your kind offer, but no thank you. That said, I've been um, talking with one particular NMN company um, only because they, they share my passion for NMN, uh, raising NAD, improving people's um, standard of living, improving health span, and possibly improving lifespan. Uh, they also share my opinion on the deluge, if you like, of NMN suppliers who are popping up on a weekly basis, who profess themselves to be NMN or longevity experts, but in my opinion are fly-by-night, fly make-a-quick-buck merchants. So um, I'm still in negotiations, I'm still in conversation with the company, if you like. Hopefully, come the next video, I'll have some more positive news with regard to me being able to put my hand in my heart and say, this is an NMN supplier that I pull my full weight behind and I can recommend them to be your NMN supplier as well. Uh, so today I'm gonna to go over my one year results. I'm gonna cover results for February, March and April of 2020. Uh, and I'm also gonna compare those against my results or the baseline statistics I took when I started this experiment uh, one year ago. So without further ado, let's jump into the spreadsheet and go through the um, go through objective statistics. So here we are in the spreadsheet. Before we go over the um, objective stats, there's a couple of things I need to say. Uh, as we know, the world is in turmoil at the moment, um, although thankfully for some countries there seems to be light at the end of the tunnel. Um, the way this has affected me is that my gym has been closed for the last six weeks, I think six, maybe eight weeks, uh, which means I have been able to maintain the same fitness regime I do. Also, I now don't have access to the machine that I can measure my um, biometric markers with. So to that end, I've had to buy a biometric set of scales. Um, some of the markers are similar to the ones I had in the gym, but some of them are different because I think they measure things in a different way. So for some of the markers we're going to discuss, this may be a reset, ground zero if you like, going forward. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into the spreadsheet and look at the stats. So first of all, my weight last time was 21.2. Now it's sorry 91.2 now it's 91.6 so i've gone up half a kilo since the last quarter but still down half a kilo overall <clears throat> bmi not a big fan of bmi very outdated measurement statistic uh same as last time um so still overweight however down 0.3 since i began so i've gone from obese to overweight Percentage body fat, I've gone from 22.5 to 26.5, so up 4%. I'm not sure how much of this has been affected by the new scale. Um, that said, if this is a, a reset, if you like, then we'll see how I go from 26.5 onwards at the next quarterly check. Muscle mass was 67.6, now 33.3. .3. Now, I haven't dropped that much muscle. The new scales I've got measure muscle mass percentage, not muscle mass score. So this may be a ground zero marker. Unless someone out there knows a formula where I can convert my muscle mass score to my muscle mass, sorry, my muscle mass percentage to my muscle mass score, and I can continue... I can change this number so it's more in line with these numbers here. Uh, I'd be happy if someone could tell me if there is a formula, uh, what it is, and I'll try and do that for the next update video. 
basal metabolic rate is 1856. That's down 213. So I've done some research on this, and it looks as though this number changes as your body weight changes. So it's not really a permanent marker. It's not like your body weight, which starts at 90 and goes to 85 and then goes back, or maybe then goes to 95, which means there's a movement. This number will change with regard to what your body weight is. So it's not a permanent marker. If I've got that wrong, again, if someone could let me know in the comments below, I'd be more than happy uh, to get that advice. Waist size was 37. Now 36.5. Uh, and again, if I'd have breathed in, I probably could have got it down to 36, but down half an inch over the last three months um, is progress in the right direction. And that's doing it down two and a half inches since the start, which again, I'm very happy with. Visceral fat was 12, now 15, so that's up three points. Again, I don't know if this is down to the new scales, Regardless, it's now 15, and I was told before that 12 is the limit. So I'm going to have to start working on getting 15 down to 12 to begin with, but then lower than that, uh, ideally. So sleep for the last quarter. You can see that in February, it was 7 hours 34 was the average um, sleep, light was that, 5 hours 47, deep, 1 hour 47. March, 7.30, 5 hours uh, 32, average light sleep, and deep, 1 hour 37. And in April, 7 hours 14, average sleep per night. Light was 5 hours 27, and deep was 1 hour 46. So for the quarter... Um, my average sleep was 7 hours 26 minutes a night, with deep sleep being 1 hour and 43, which comes out at 23.9, which is slightly down on um, the last quarter, but still 23% is good. I, I think, if I'm right, as long as you're over 20% of your deep sleep, then you're, it's the good kind of sleep that helps regenerate. Uh, still no napping in the afternoon. Um, with my disrupted work schedule, there's been more than ample time to nap in the afternoons with the stay-at-home policy, and I've, I've not felt the need to do it, um, which again is a, is a good marker, I believe. So metabolic age. Um, I have now taken a, an epigenetic DNA test to measure my biological age. I've sent that off. Once I get that back, then I'll do a video on the results, uh, and I'll probably be doing that at least every year um, I don't know if I would show a significant change every six months. Um, it is expensive, but we'll we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> the reason I'm not going to use the metabolic age from the biometric scales I've got <clears throat> is I watched this YouTuber who runs a channel called Get Fit Over 40. He says that the Omron biomet biometric scales I use use some kind of mathematical formula that doesn't have an athletic mode. <clears throat> and I know that the one that's in the gym did have an, uh, an athletic mode because as they go through the questions, he looks at you and says whether or not you're athletic build, fat, normal, etc. These scales don't have it. This guy, who's obviously some kind of fitness fanatic at the age of 45, I think 46, these scales tell him he is 60 years of age, um, so not very accurate. My age was, when I did it on the scales, was 64. So with no athletic mode, I think it just takes into account heavily your BMI score, which again, I'm not a big fan of. So I shan't be measuring my, biometric, my biological age using the scales. Um, so, if you go by the scales, I'm 64, 65, which I think is, is wrong. I've done the genetic test, so once the uh, score comes back, then I will tell you what that is, and I will update that score definitely once every year. 
but I won't be recording that on the scales anymore. Uh, on to the obesity. So uh, change the gym and my gym is closed. The biometric scales don't record this marker. So unfortunately, there's no way that I can continue to measure my obesity degree using the current set of scales that I've got. Um, so that's it for the objective scores uh, for my last three months. So that's it for the uh, objective stats. Um, all in all, I think quite good. Um, where there's been quite a change in the stats from the last quarter, uh, I think it's down to the new scales. If you think otherwise, then again, please let me know in the comments below. Um, with all the extra time I've got on my hands, it would be quite easy for me to up my exercise regime, uh, lose more weight um, and lose size on my uh, waist, etc. That's not the aim. The aim is to see if I can maintain a similar lifestyle and a similar, similar exercise, exercise regime and see what effect the supplements I'm taking have on those over a long period of time. So let's move on to the more objective statistics uh, and we'll go through those. So I've got those written down here. First of all is the dosage of supplements I'm taking. So still on one gram of NMN, one gram of TMG and one gram of resveratrol. On the 12th of February, I started to take uh, 10,000 international units of vitamin D3. And along with that comes 900 international units of vitamin K2. So I started taking those on the 12th of Feb. Uh, I will start to take 1,200 milligrams of berberine uh, on my birthday. Um, so that was two days ago, I think. <clears throat> uh, with regard to mood, again, no discernible change, still calm, still active, um, no change whatsoever. Uh, overall feeling, still lots of energy, still noticeable that I don't moan and groan when I get up. Uh, and I've noticed that other people do, people of my age. Uh, and I'll elaborate slightly more on my overall feeling when I come to the the exercise element or the gym factor, if you like. Um, eating and drinking, no change. Um, the only change I've really made is adding vitamin B3 and K2, and that's had no effect on me with regard to mood, uh, eating, eating habits, etc. Uh, no injuries. Gym performance, obviously, now uh, I'm not lifting any weights. Uh, it's down to a short run up and down the road outside my uh, accommodation and then a one tomato session out on the lawn uh, as I would normally do. Um, I've implemented into the fitness regime because although I can run up and down, it's now 38 degrees, which is close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit for our American friends. Um, I've implemented a bike riding. Um, so I go, instead of doing a 30 minute run and then the Tabata session, I go for a 35, 40 minute bike ride. Nothing intense, fairly steady. Um, as far as I'm concerned, when I'm riding, I don't even think I've raised my heart rate. On the next update, I will use my fitness tracker and I will look at the days that I bike rode and look at my heart rate to see if it's affected it um, more than my normal little run and the Tabata session. Um, so that's it for gym performance. Very difficult to measure this quarter against the last quarter where I haven't had access to the gym as I normally do. But these are the things when there's a pandemic around the world. Sickness, um, not much chance of getting sick really. You've got a social distance in work, you've got to wear gloves and you've got to wear a mask. When you go to the supermarket, you've got a social distance. You have your temperature taken as you go in. You get given a set of gloves um, and you've got to wear a mask. Otherwise, you're not allowed into the supermarket. 
anywhere you go, you have to wear a mask and you have to socially distance. So no sickness whatsoever for the last um, for the last quarter, which is good, but understandable with regard to the, the social distancing rules. Uh, so that's it for the um, subjective stats for the last quarter. So those are the stats for the last quarter uh, measured against my baseline stats when I started a year ago. Um, this is an ongoing process. It's not going to happen overnight. I understand that. Um, I remember David Sinclair saying in one of his interviews, he's been taking resveratrol now for 10 years and NMN for only three. Uh, and I think in his last biological age check, he was 10 years younger. So this is not going to happen overnight for me. I know this is going to be a long process. And that's the reason I'm, I'm recording all these stats. Um, at the moment, all I'm looking for is either no change or a slower decline, if you like, compared to people that aren't on these kind of supplements. What I do do that I haven't mentioned before, um, and there's no one in here, so I don't know why I'm looking around, is that I use friends, family and co-workers as a control group. Um, I note when they are sick and, I've, and I try to see how long they are sick for. I see what makes them sick or I find out what made them sick. Uh, I look and ask if they're putting on weight as delicately as I can. I ask them about their diet and their exercise regime. I also ask them what supplements they're taking, um, what they're taking, how often they take it and if they think it's doing them any good. Um, and I measure myself against those. This is unofficial. I don't note this. This is just a, a, a mental note that I take. The difficult thing with this is, is keeping down the competitive side where if I see someone who's exercising in a certain way and is losing weight or becoming fitter, I've got to stop myself from competing with them and exercising harder, exercising longer, because that's not the aim of the game. The aim of the game is for me to carry on as normal and to measure my progress against my stats and against these unofficial, uh, the unofficial control group I've got. Uh, so that's it for today. Please leave your comments in the section below with regard to any um, stats that you think are worthy of comment. If you think that I'm incorrect with regard to the changes in numbers because I've changed the biometric measurement system to the scales, again, please leave your, your comments in the section below. Uh, also remember the next video, hopefully, um, I'll be able to recommend an NMN supplier um, one that I can put my heart on, my hand on my heart and say, this is a supplier that I do recommend 100%. Uh, and hopefully then that will be a place you'll be able to get your NMN, resveratrol and berberine at a very competitive price as well. Um, that's it for today. Please leave your comments in the section below. Thanks for watching. In these extraordinary times, please, please stay safe. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care and uh, bye for now.